This is a handheld PC gaming console I'm designing called the Zendeck. I'm making a series of videos about it as I work on the design and build process so that you guys can come along for the ride. In today's video I want to look at the controller and cover some of the basics of what you need to build a simple controller for your own projects using Arduino. So let's get started. First up we need to decide on what microcontroller to use as the Arduino platform has support for loads of different options. There are a few different things we need to consider when selecting a microcontroller. Number of digital inputs, analog inputs, program memory and operating voltage to name a few. I'm going to focus on the controller for my Zendeck project so let's have a look at what it needs. Since I have two joysticks and two analog triggers I'll need six analog inputs in total. I'll need at least 15 digital inputs for the face buttons, shoulder buttons and joystick center clicks assuming I don't end up adding any rear buttons to the controller grips. If you're planning to add any extra features like RGB lights or rumble motors make sure you take them into consideration too. My joysticks are going to have RGB lights surrounding them but since they can be connected in a string I will only need one more additional digital signal pin for them. I'm also planning to add two rumble motors, one small and one large so I will need a signal for each of those bringing my total required I.O. up to 18 digital and 6 analog. Next we need to consider how the microcontroller is going to connect to our PC. In most cases this will be as a USB HID device. There are other ways you can use an Arduino to create a controller if you're using something like a Raspberry Pi that can communicate with the Arduino over I2C. But that's a bit more complicated to explain so I won't cover it in this video. The ability to emulate a USB human interface device isn't something that all microcontrollers have so that will severely limit our list of potential candidates. Some of the common choices for this purpose are the Raspberry Pi Pico, Arduino Micro, Arduino Leonardo and finally the Teensy lineup. The Pro Micro and the Leonardo are both basically the same board, just different sizes. In fact you can find many non-genuine Arduino boards based on the same Atmega 32U4 chip which will also work for our purposes. I'm going to ignore the Teensy lineup just purely because they are much more expensive than the rest of our options. So let's look at the Raspberry Pi Pico first. The Pico is the cheapest option coming in at just 7 Australian dollars. It runs a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor at up to 133 MHz and has 265k of SRAM along with 2 MB of onboard flash. It has a total of 26 general purpose I.O. pins however only 3 of those are analog inputs. This isn't necessarily a deal breaker as there are other ways we can add some analog inputs if we choose to go this way. Next up is the Arduino Micro. Whilst the official Arduino Micro could set you back around 43 Australian dollars, there are loads of different versions available from AliExpress and other cheap marketplaces using the same IC that can be had for around the $2.80 mark. If you choose to go this route just make sure they have enough I.O as I've found a lot of them don't break out as many of the I.O. pins as the official micro board. The Atmega 32U4 found on all these boards is significantly less powerful than the Pico with just a 16 MHz clock speed, 2.5K of SRAM and 32K of flash memory of which only 28K is available if you want to still have a bootloader. The micro has 24 I.O. pins, 12 of which can be used for analog inputs. This is actually enough for most standard layout controllers so it's probably the easiest option for beginners. The low amount of memory can be a bit of a limiting factor but generally there is enough for a full featured controller as long as you're a little bit careful about how you use the storage space. Next we need to look at what libraries are available to us. If you aren't familiar with the Arduino ecosystem libraries are just little packages of code that do the dirty work for you and keep the programming environment as simple to use as possible. To be able to use the Pico with the Arduino IDE you will need to install it from the boards manager. I won't go into details here as there are lots of great tutorials on how to get this up and running. There seems to be two main ways to get the Pico running in Arduino, Embed OS and Arduino Pico. I've had much more success with Arduino Pico than I have had with Embed purely because it has much better documentation so I'd recommend starting with that one. Using the inbuilt joystick library you can easily set up a generic HID joystick device. Support for the Micro is simpler as it's one of Arduino's own devices so it's included by default. It also has a joystick library and it works much the same way as the Pico one does. Since the Micro has been around for a lot longer than the Pico I've found there are often more options for libraries available. One such option for the Micro is the Arduino X input library which allows us to emulate an Xbox style controller instead of just a generic joystick type controller. This should help improve compatibility and it even appears to support rumble feedback which is one of the main reasons that this is the library and microcontroller combo 
I will be choosing for the Zendek. I'm only going to touch on wiring here, but for the buttons it's really simple. Just connect your buttons between your chosen digital I.O. pins and ground. You can use the Arduino's inbuilt resistor pull-up, so there's no need for any external resistors, just buttons and wires. The joysticks are only slightly more complex, and the exact wiring will depend on which joysticks you are using, but ultimately you'll need a power supply, a ground connection, and a signal wire running to your analog input of choice. Watch out for some of the Hall Effect joysticks, as they may only be intended to run on 3.3 volts, so powering them from a 5 volt pin on your Arduino could cause damage. Since I haven't built a controller with Rumble before, I'm going to give it a quick test and make sure it works before committing to the design. It looks like the rumble is reported back to us as an integer value. So I will just scale and map it to one of the PWM capable pins on this Leonardo. I'm just going to use a single MOSFET to drive the motor. There's no need for a fancy H-bridge motor driver since the motor doesn't need to be able to reverse. Using the gamepad tester from hardwaretester.com, I can trigger the rumble motor. This will be a nice upgrade for the Zendek controller. Hopefully I'll be able to squeeze these nice big Xbox One rumble motors in. But failing that, I will definitely have room for some of the smaller rumble motors that are available. This library is probably a little more difficult for beginners than the standard joystick library, as part of the process of supporting X input prevents the Arduino from being able to reset itself during upload. This means you'll need to be able to press the reset button on the Arduino at precisely the right time during the upload process, otherwise it will fail. Dave Madison, the creator of this library, has a fantastic step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use it, and he's included a debug mode so you can still do the development work on your computer before finally enabling X input. I'll leave a link to his tutorial in the description if you want to check it out. Finally, we need to talk about software. I'm going to be making my own custom software for the Zendek controller using the X input library we just discussed, as I want the second half of the controller to be an independent I2C device, like I did for the NUC deck, just to minimize the side to side wiring. If you aren't trying to do anything that complex, or you just aren't interested in learning to code, there's quite a few good options out there already for many different types of game controllers. I even have my own controller software on GitHub for a basic controller using an Atmega 32U4 based microcontroller. So feel free to grab that and have a go at building one for yourself. I've put links for a couple of different controller software options as well as my own in the description. That just about wraps things up, but first a quick word from this project sponsor, PCBWay. They have been instrumental in getting this project started and I will soon be sending the first revisions of the controller and battery management PCB designs to them for the Zendek. I've put their link in the video description. Make sure you show them how much we appreciate their support next time you need some PCBs, milling or 3D printing done. Thanks for watching.